Mr. Kilgore is excused. And from CPD, I see Sergeant Scott Alpers and acting or interim? Acting. Acting Chief Jill Schlute. Welcome. Hello. Moving on, is there a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. And I forgot to introduce Ms. Rose Wibbenmeyer from the City of Columbia, our liaison. Sorry about that. And the introductions come before the motion to approve. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, was the motion made by? Yes. Mr. Fisher made a motion to approve the agenda. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of approval of the agenda, let it be known by aye. 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 Anyone opposed, let it be known by nay. Motion to approve the agenda passes. Moving on to item four, approval of minutes. Did everyone receive the draft meeting minutes from December 12th? Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes? Is there a second? Second. All in favor of approval of the minutes, let it be known by aye. 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 Anyone opposed, let it be known by nay. Motion passes. Moving on to item five, positive connections and ride-alongs. Anything? I'm, I'm thinking um, something I did this afternoon. Um, yeah, visited the um, Joint Communication Center. It's my second visit uh, there to speak with uh, Brad Martin um, regarding um, how they work, their policies, their procedures, and calls coming into um, coming into there. And, and my purpose for going is because um, maybe a couple of weeks ago, uh, I called the police department uh, out to my home. It wasn't an emergency or anything. And um, the call dropped three times. And I thought it was unusual. Um, and uh, then I called Brad, maybe a, uh, Chad, I mean, a day or so later, and through a long conversation with him, uh, learned that there is a, an issue uh, and that some numbers go into maybe police dispatch downtown. I mean, there is no, no one number other than 911 that you call, and you know where that's going to go. And uh, then Chad explained to me what had happened that my call, for some reason, went downtown. And there's something wrong with, um, I don't know what it is, but there's uh, something wrong with the, the system downtown to where calls drop. Have you heard of that? Or? Not in relation to calling joint, but I do know there, so you can call 911, you can call the non-emergency number out at joint, and then... We have separate numbers to just the front desk. Yeah, but when you Google, Google will give you a number, and I think, and he mentioned it again today that uh, that um, that issue still exists. Yeah, we actually tried to get when you used to Google the number that used to show up actually went to no one. It was an old administration number, <laughs> and we contacted Google to try to get them to remove it or change it, and that was basically like passing a law through Congress. It seemed like so. Not really sure what the solution is there. Anyway, that was my um, not right along, but positive connection. Anything else from anyone? Moving on to item six, election of the chair and vice chair. Again, we are missing two members this month. Last time we had a full body was in <coughs> October, I believe, which was when we were supposed to have the election. And so if we postpone again to next month, which I would like to do, I would propose that this be at the last time that it's um, postponed and that come hell or high water next month, we have the election with whoever's here if we have a quorum.
I propose that we wait until we have everybody present. I concur. I'm fine with that. Anyone else? I agree with that. I think um, with the adoption or with the integration of the new members, uh, it seems like next month should be ideal for everyone to be here. Uh, I can't speak for anyone wider than if anything comes up, but uh, it seems like next month should be the opportunity to get this knocked out. So is there a motion to postpone the vote until next month and to have is there a hearing there together? Make a motion. I'm not going to make it sui sponte. Would you care to make a motion? I make a motion. Motion has been made to postpone the election of the chair and vice chair and to have the current chair and vice chair uh, maintain the positions until February when the meet, um, elections could be held. I'll second. All in favor of the motion as stated, let it be known by aye. 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 Anyone opposed, let it be known by nay. Motion passes. Next item of old business, approval of the annual report. Um, so I guess Rose said she got no um, adjustments, but I did notice there wasn't a conclusion. I guess we didn't decide that. No one, no. usually someone from the okay. board writes that and nobody. Right, I usually, I usually write the conclusion once we make all of the amendments and changes and I was waiting to hear if there was anything. And oh, I usually that's just submitted to us and then it comes to the board. So if you plan to write a conclusion, then you will need to pass this till next month and you will need to write the conclusion. We'll need to submit it. have to approve it at next month's meeting. Okay. The deadline in the ordinance. Does the board feel there needs to be a conclusion or are you comfortable submitting the uh, report as is? What I'm worried about with writing the conclusion and having to have it pass is given both weather and the possibility we may not have a quorum is we might have a problem getting it in time. By ordinance, you're required to meet monthly. So if you had to cancel a meeting in February, you would have to make up that meeting in February. You have to be pretty much early in February to meet the deadline of March 1st. Right. And that would be my concern. So what's the board's feeling on that? Would you like... I don't have a problem writing a summary or a conclusion, or would you like to submit it without? I'd say add the conclusion. Um, Other? That's what it's missing, yeah. Sure. Other feelings? I, I'm not, uh, it sounds like it's gonna be tight, but uh, I think it's best to go ahead and finish it out. And get I, will, I will draft that and get it submitted and I will try to submit it to Rose prior to the meeting for comment. Yeah. Next item of old business, the banner. Okay, so um, right now um, your budget for printing has $324 in it. However, there is a negative $4.23 in postage so the category for your budget is at 319.77. So um, you have the estimates for a six foot tablecloth at 238, an eight foot tablecloth at 258. Um, if you got the tablecloth for 238, that leaves $81.77 to tide you over until the end of September um, for that whole category. Um, if you got the eight foot length, that would leave $61.77 for the whole category. The category would include any printing, postage, other things like food, um, those sorts of things. So um, if you decide you want to order the banner and approve that purchase tonight, it would be coming out of the printing funds. And so your motion would be to purchase whatever length of banner or tablecloth that is going to be. Um, if you, the other options are, if you know, yes, we want the banner and we also want to pay for the event fees to 
work different events, then there would be a motion to send a report to council to request funding in the amount of however much to purchase the banner and however much to pay for the event fees. And then the council would then take that and they would decide whether or not they want you to get more money to do those things or not. Or the third option is if you don't want to purchase it this year, but you want to have the money to purchase it next year. Um, later on in the agenda, we have the supplemental budget process discussion. But basically, right now, the city is starting the process for next fiscal year, so fiscal year 2020. And supplementals, which are things that are not in your usual budget, but you want to have for next fiscal year, you have to ask for them in supplemental. And, and so um, there's a deadline of March for submission of all supplemental requests. And um, you have to say how much you're asking for and provide a justification. That goes to the finance department and the city manager. And then the city manager makes the decision whether or not to include that in the normal budget that gets submitted to council in August for approval in August. So those are different options. You have enough money so you could order, you know, you could decide, hey, yes, we want to spend our money for this tonight, um, in which case then we would just um, get with you and, and put place the order based on the estimates that Tammy has, but that, like I said, that will either leave 8177 or 6177. That will need to last you until the end of the fiscal year. So how many, or what our current inventory is on the current brochures? Well, you have the and English we brochures. We just did the reorder on the English brochures, and I think it was, what, 700 you had printed? Um, I don't think you have any Spanish brochures anymore other than the ones that are online and, and the one official copy that Tracy keeps that are in the records. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wanted to print Spanish brochures, you would, if you use the money for the banner, you wouldn't have the money for that. Um, so it's just kind of one of those things as to what your priorities are. Um, with regard to each, in the city budget, there are different categories. So. The council only budget you budget included the printing budget in the category that includes like postage. So we had to mail the closed records out, so that comes out of your postage budget. But you don't have anything in postage, so that's why that's a negative, and that's why it's coming off of your printing cap because they're in the same category. Um, similarly, years ago when you had a Saturday training, which is also something we're going to talk about. The board before has done half day trainings and they've, they've also done full day trainings where they wanted breakfast and they wanted lunch. Well, you don't have anything in the food budget, which is in the same category. So if that's something also you want to do training, then you're going to have to either do the report to council or do the supplemental process to get enough money either way. Okay. You had a question, Bill. Yeah, this banner thing has been going on eight months. And all we wanted was a simple banner. <coughs> I even offered to buy it. You know, how can we move it along faster, Rose, so that we can can we can we take a vote tonight on the on the eight foot banner and let that be it? Well, like I said, I mean there the the you have like three options for the motions. One is if you want to make a motion to use printing funds to purchase a blank foot tablecloth, then that would be seconded and then there'd be a vote on that. Okay. The okay. other the other two options is a motion to send a report to the city council to request funding in the amount of however much for the banner and however much for your event fees. Because you also don't have anything budgeted for event fees. Well, it, we all started with the event fees with this thing, and we aren't interested in any event fees. We're just I, interested in getting a banner. I understand you're not interested in event fees, but if you're going to have a banner or table cloth, the question becomes is what are you going to do with it? If you're planning to go to events, events charge fees to participate in the event. So you have to... Uh, budget for those fees so you can pay for those fees to go to those events. If you are you found some events that I don't know of that are free and you're like, well, we don't have to worry about event fees because there are free events we're going to go to, Yes. then that is fine. Then maybe you don't need a budget for that. 
I'd be really curious as to what those events are because I also have to do other events for other agencies. Um, but that's just, I mean, that's unrelated to this. Yeah, but our events have nothing to do with you because this is an independent body. Would you like to make a motion, Bill, instead of go we're going back and forth, make the motion and we yeah, vote on Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we get an eight-foot, whatever the first one was you said, Rose. I said $238 for a six-foot tablecloth. Yes, that $258 that for an eight-foot tablecloth. The first one. So a motion's been made to purchase a six-foot tablecloth banner. and. I which would leave us 8177 in the postage budget. Is that correct, Rose? That's right. what I think, assuming that that is, you know, there aren't any other fees, that's what it should be. And the 8177 would carry 8177 is in the printing budget. In the printing budget, postage. excuse me. Po printing and postage budget, which would printing, carry printing and printing. But it's in the same category as postage and food. So if you wanted to do any more printing or any more postage or if you want to order food all you would have until September 30th is 8177 okay wouldn't be able to use any of the miscellaneous contractual funds for any of that you would have to get that transferred so that would require going to council yeah. for transfer cool the motion's been made to purchase the six foot tablecloth type banner is there a second second all in favor of purchase the budget well, take two. All in fa favor of the purchase of the banner, let it be known by aye. 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 Anyone opposed, let it be known by nay. Nay. Anyone that is abstaining, let it be known by abstain. I'm abstaining. So the motion carries. So, Rose, you'll bring that to the meeting, I guess, when we get it. The banner? Yeah. Um, or in like your office or yeah I mean it, it'll be stored in I, I would assume okay. unless somebody wants to store it at their house but usually it'll just basically be sitting in the law department until somebody comes to pick it up okay. for an event and then brings it back um, the one thing I will emphasize in the past the board previously had bought some books that they would then take with them none of the books remain because they were so if you do check out, we don't have a library system, we don't have a checkout system, but if you do come to take the banner to some place, eventually you need to make sure the banner comes back. Moving on to item seven, new business. With regard to recommendations adopted by the CPRB. Um, so that was something I sent out. I thought it would go well with um, the other topics in the new business. And it was uh, um, for a couple of different reasons, but um, I guess for kind of institutional legacy, when I pulled up the report, um, the only member that's still on the board that's listed on the report is me. So um, I figured push it forward so new members um, and people just now finding out about the board can know about some of our previous work. Um, in short, it was uh, came out of a conversation through a subcommittee um, after we uh, had presentations on the 21st century uh, policing report, uh, presidential policing report, some um, national um, investigation on, on policing and best practices. So we wrote recommendations um, reviewed by our board um, to the city council to let them know um, they looked at it I think, and uh, that was the end of it. But that way you all know um, kind of what, I guess, the past board was interested in, the kind of work we've done before, um, and where we could go in the future. What, what year was that from? I, I, I think, think I was confused I think when I saw 17. it. I saw 17, 17, 2017. Yeah. 2017. Okay. And there, we no longer have standing subcommittee. That was the year that we ended the subcommittee. So. Yeah, that, that's just what confused me for a second. Mm -hmm. The city is starting their strategic plan process to develop the new strategic plan. So if you are really interested in the city's strategic plan, there are opportunities in public meetings where people can provide input. Um, One's going on right now. Groups yep. into Sorry, the next strategic plan. Okay. 
Anything else? No, that was, I mean, like I said, just to get it out there and kind of keep memory together. Well, moving on to the next item in that section, the annual review of sections 21-44 through 21-59 of the city <coughs> code. This is where we normally take a look at the city code and any things that we might want to consider. If there are any changes that we want to talk about, it's something that we need to add to next month's agenda. Are there any changes that you might want to see or anything that you'd like to add that we might want to talk about? I was kind of curious about with 2147 with our meetings and elections just because uh, you know, we have postponed our chair and vice chair elections now multiple meetings in a row. Is it possible to maybe set a hard date in that section so now we know this, like the first meeting of each year, we just do it unless there's not a quorum present? So a possible addition or change in 2147 to have a hard date as to when officer elections occur? I would just think the first, either the first meeting of the fiscal year or the first meeting of the year. I think that's something that we should add to the agenda for next month. Change to 2147. Anything else? Yes, I'd uh, like for you to maybe add term limits on chair and vice chair. Okay, and that would also be in 2147. willing to draft that language well what I'll do is I'll put it on next okay. month's agenda and then you guys can talk about what it is you want every <coughs> motion passes law department will draft the language okay and mm. the way this happens is you can make recommendations but ultimately the council is the one that decides so the motion would be to send a report to council to make the you know the following changes to the ordinance Anything else in any of those sections? Moving on to the next item, review of bylaws. Any changes, modifications, or additions needed or that we would want to talk about at the next meeting? Hearing none, moving on to the next item, dates for spring training. Sounds like baseball, but it's not. Right, okay, so um, under the ordinances, you're to um, have training, and over the last few years, we've been trying to break that up with one hour per each meeting. However, um, you all have had so much transition that we really need to get back on um, some more intensive training. So originally, when the board started, the first couple of boards would do Saturday sessions. So I sent out some dates earlier today on Saturdays when I'm available and I can get the room of March 9th, April 6th, April 27th, and May 11th. And I'm hoping that one or more than one of those dates will work for you so that I can then start arranging for a variety of speakers on all the various topics recommended by Nicole. Are you looking at whole day, half day? That would be, a, that would be something you need to sort out as to if you want to do a whole day or a half day. Um, there any specific advantages or disadvantages like is are we just stretching it out by doing half days or can we get you know what I mean are we gonna like reduce the amount of days that we need to do training by doing full days or does it make a huge difference either way you're probably gonna have at least two days um, and when I say that is one day we probably need to have because Nicole recommends that it's not just, you're not just trained just by the police. So we have to have a variety of people in the community provide training. That I can fit, you know, I can stack them if they're mm -hmm. available on one date. The use of force training that Cornelia had asked about, that's usually had at... Ms. Cornella. Cornella. That's held at the, um, the police training center, so that would be a separate 
date. And that last time, I think, it was So that's usually done on a I haven't even gotten with them yet because I think start with the you know, Nicole requirements include things like why you know why civilian oversight, why their review board, how that played out in this team. Why needs to hmm. happen, and there are things like that that we've had in the past, and to get with again to start that process. So does anybody have any conflicts on any of those four dates? Uh, I have. I saw. I caught March 9th, I think April 26th. Was that one of them? And May 11th. What was the fourth date? It was March, March 9th, 9th, April 6th, okay. April 27th, and May 11th. Those are Saturdays. Okay. Can you say those one more time? March 9th, April 6th, April 27th, and May 11th. So is anyone not available on those dates? I don't have my personal account in front of me, but I also doubt that I have anything scheduled out that far. So those should be fine for me. Uh, and I'm amenable to whatever the board needs. Like if we can do, I can power through a full day if we want to stack it up, or if it's better to do half days, that's fine by me, so. Same here. Let's do full days and knock my. Well, and I'm thinking it'll probably be like almost a full day here and then probably a half day out at the police training. So no, everybody's available on those four dates. Okay, what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna get with Randall and Delaney and check their schedules and then I'll start lining up speakers and as soon as I get that, I will send you a firm two of those four dates. So put holds, please. Moving on to the next item, supplemental bud. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to go back, if I could, um, to um, annual, annual review of bylaws. Okay. I'd like to go back to that section because um, we had um, the situation that came up with one complaint here. I'm not going to mention the complaint. And we we're kind of like not able to address what we saw and so I think that something needs to happen within the regulations here or a policy here so that anything in which we might see that's that's within a complaint that we should have privy to it would that be in the bylaws would that be in code I think it would be in the bylaws I, I'm not following you. Can you tell me a little bit more as to what you're asking? Yeah, if we walked out on the street here and there was a policeman that was talking ugly to someone and um, and say he started talking ugly to me and three more policemen drove up and um, though they didn't get the first call, the other policemen were around and they were engaging in um, maybe inappropriate language or something like that. And so maybe I could file a complaint on the guy that, you know, that I uh, had an issue with. But the other two, um, because I didn't know their names or whatever it is, I may not be able to file a complaint. And I think we're all familiar, maybe some of us are familiar with the complaint that I'm talking about. Uh, but and you could still file a complaint even if you don't know the names. The police often get complaints and they don't know the names of like the complainant might not know the name or the badge number of the person, but they still can use the information they have in the record system to identify who that's filed against. Okay, but as a board, because we might look at it, um, there was great conversation here about can we forward something to the police department regarding the other officers that were there on the scene? Well, that's you becoming the complainant, not you becoming a member of the Citizens Police Review Board providing oversight. And that's and that's member, exactly and that's exactly where I'm going with this. In that, in that, yeah, we review things, but also if there's a policeman out there that does something, and um, and we see it as a board, we can't address it as a board, even though there's no complaint and there's 
inappropriate behavior or well, misconduct? What we had talked about previously was the fact that you all have to, to function as a review board and to provide the civilian oversight that you have been charged by the city council to provide, that you have to remain independent. Now, if one of you sees an incident and becomes a complainant, then you're going to serve as a complainant and you won't be a member of the, you, you would still be a member of the board, but you'd be recused from that case because you're the complainant, not the member of the board. Okay, what I'm saying is, if the board receives a complaint and we're looking at this complaint and we see that there are three police officers that are really, really bad behavior and, and they are the main characters here and then there's two over here that is bad behavior and we see it and even though uh, there's no complaint filed against these two, even though we see it on video, we can't address it and send a letter to the chief saying, also, we saw within the video something that needs to be addressed. Or, or are you saying that we can't do that? What I'm saying is for your primary role is civilian oversight. So the person or any witnesses who might have seen that incident might file a complaint, might appeal to you all, and if, you be, if, if the entire board becomes the complainant, that person will not have civilian oversight anymore because you'll all be recused off. So part of this is when you're looking at a situation, you're looking at what that person who complained about, what they complained about, and what has been appealed to you on that complaint. You don't necessarily know if the police department, when they were investigating that complaint, they saw things, they disciplined those other officers because the person didn't appeal on those other officers. Well, I think now, that's kind of where I'm going. Once you get yeah. to the point where the time to appeal has elapsed, the time to file a complaint and the time to appeal has elapsed, you can look at that whole situation and say, hey, we didn't get a complaint about this one thing, but by the way, in addition, part of the role of the staff liaison from the police department um, the staff liaison told you at the time when this was coming up that he would relay this information back to the police department. So I think your concerns can be addressed in different ways, but I think what you really have to think about, um, if you do want to change like that, that does require quite a bit of ordinance changing. Not You can't change that in your bylaws because that goes fundamentally to the structure of civilian oversight. So if you are talking about doing something like that, yes. that changes many ordinances and I think that will involve a lot of discussion as to how you would see that playing out while still becoming and remaining independent civilian oversight. Because you're supposed to be unbiased and fair. You know, you are unbiased and fair, an officer can appeal to you or a complainant who's not an officer can appeal to you. It's set up so that you truly hear things and see things coming from both the police officer as well as the complainant. What you seem to want to say is, well, yes, but we also want to, com to kind of also be able to complain about things. I don't know that that's what he's saying, but it's more no, about it's not. If, we, if we get like visual evidence of inappropriate behavior by an officer, we feel very hamstrung that we can't address that and having to wait for X number of period of time to happen, to, to pass, and then remember back whatever that is, if it's a year up to a year, like, oh, now we can respond about this way after the fact. And more to the point that that doesn't feel like we're doing our actual job for oversight, which is looking out for the citizens of the city. So if we can't address behavior, then we can't communicate to the citizens that the behavior is being addressed, and we're just kind of one stuck. Of, one of the other options we talked about at that time, um, because the police department liaison said he would relay that information back to the chief, discuss the option of you including in your letter to the chief some sort of language to ask him to look at the video or something like that, that there were concerns expressed and to watch the video. That could be something you could do 
you're not weighing in, you're not judging, you're not becoming the complainant, you're just saying that there was some discussion that there were some concerns expressed about this and could he please take a look at it? It, it does kind of look like uh, Article 4, Section 3 that if we have a situation where we're watching like video evidence or someone's talking about another officer's name is mentioned, we can call that officer in for questioning about the incident that's being complained about. But Just we can't. She told us we can't because he could give us evidence that could cause us to have to be recused. Recu I'm the complainant. Unless only one person would be deciding to become the complainant. Because if, you, as a board, you decide to become the complainant, you're defeating the whole purpose of civilian oversight. So you can interview witnesses when you have a case pending in front of you. But part of the problem is if you're trying to say, let's say I'm going to make up names. Let's, I'm just going to use letters of the alphabet. If the, if the complainant complains about Officer A, but you see something in the video about Officer B and you want to pursue things against Officer B, Officer B has not been provided notice that's required in the ordinance. So that someone would have to, you know, like there would have to be a complainant. And what we had talked about before was the idea that one of you could choose to become the complainant, but the whole board should not choose to become the complainant. If one person would choose to become the complainant, that person could recuse and not be part of the board when the appeal then came to the board, if it came. The other thing we talked about is just because the complaint was against Officer A and the appeals against Officer A, it may be when the police were investigating Officer A, they saw and already dealt with and disciplined Officer B that you have an issue with, but you won't necessarily know that because that has not come to you on appeal. And if it was not a complaint involving an interaction with the public, and it was an internal supervisory matter, then that is a closed record and you won't necessarily know that. Fortunately for the citizen who might have made the initial complaint, they see none of that. They don't see Officer B get any corrective action. They don't know what's really going on with Officer A except for the letter from the chief says, no wrongdoing found or something like that, whatever the <coughs> position is. So to the individual who experienced something from Officer A, Officer B, and Officer C, who was here before unmentioned, they got that collective experience. They filed their complaint against Officer A. We see B, we can't do anything about it. And they don't even get the catharsis of knowing that their situation was addressed. But it, it sounds like a lot of this just stems from being very specific about these complaints. I mean, if, the, if a citizen has a complaint and alleges it against just Officer A, then we're constrained to looking at Officer A. If they file a complaint against Officer A, B, and C at the same time, then we can address A, B, and C at the same time. Is that, I mean, is that, am I understanding Correct. that? Correct, and, yeah. and it could be that initially, for example, let's say initially they filed against Officer A, and then later, within that year period of time from the date of the incident, they, let's say, they've done a sunshine request and they've watched the video over at CPD during the day. They decide they want to file against Officer B, then that complaint, you know, the officer gets, Officer B gets notice of that complaint, and that works its way through the system. Is that when the jurisdiction yeah. starts? Or is, is it- Is that when what starts? Because one of the issues that we seem to face also is do we have jurisdiction all over something? You know, we, we gotta look at that time frame that's right. in there as well. The, there's a year to file a complaint, and then once the chief makes a decision on the complaint, there's the 21 days to file an appeal to the review board. So if they, so if they file one against A, a year later, nine months later, they filed against B, then we're still fine. As long as they file the complaint within a year of the date of the incident, they can do that. And, and that's, I think, probably, ha I imagine it's happened in the past, um, just because what usually happens is the person files a complaint before they watch the video or get the reports, and then they file additional stuff later so that they can take different paths. The other part of that is if they do do that where they file initially against A and they later learn about B and then they file against B, it may be that internally the chief's decision on B is different than the decision on A. In which case, let's say the chief decides on B, yeah, I think that officer did something wrong, I'm disciplining that officer, 
and the complaint is satisfied with that, that appeal never comes to you. Now, with all that said, because the police department has provided members of the board access to see every complaint that comes in, you can be looking for that, and then the liaison, you can say, hey, I wanna, you know, I have some questions about this, and at the next meeting, the liaison can come in and hopefully be able to answer your questions or tell you where the status is on that complaint. Um, the board itself, when they were looking at the general um, supervision of uh, auditing of those records, um, the, I think there was a subcommittee at some point that discussed it, is they wanted to make sure that they weren't getting additional details until the time for appeal had lapsed. So that was one of the things that the board had in the process that they had discussed with the police department was you had to wait for that time period to lapse and then they would answer your questions and, and the reason why there's the delay between the question and when they can answer it is because we have to figure out if that's an open or closed record and if it's a closed record we have to advertise a closed meeting for that discussion to occur. And just out of curiosity, because I know probably way before my time that year of jurisdiction was decided and, and I think about the process, how long it takes for when somebody goes to court and trial and all of that, it just seems like that year doesn't match realistically with the whole proceedings that someone goes through through the court system. It's just like you can take two years to work your way through court, but we're giving somebody a year to file a complaint. I mean, in that year, what if they're found not guilty, but because of us saying that they only have a year to come back and file a complaint, that it just doesn't seem to match up together. That, that was discussed by the community when they were looking at how long a time and whether there should be a time limit on how long a time it should be like. And they looked at um, the time for filing appeals in the Court of Appeals the time for filing complaints that get prosecuted, like the statute of limitations. And they also looked at the Missouri Supreme Court operating rules, which sets time frames and standards for the disposition of criminal cases, because they were really trying to focus in on what is fair, what, what would then give the board the information that they needed from witnesses, you know, witness memory, um, complainant, and police officer memory as to what really happened, as well as making sure that if the complainant had a criminal charge that they wouldn't have to jeopardize their criminal case to make a complaint. And the criminal defense bar was involved in the discussion and um, basically every what they the community decided at that time was one year was fair. And um, to give you some idea, I just pulled up the Supreme Court operating rules. Um, the operating standards set forth a local goal, goal of at least um, let's see, felony cases, so circuit felony. 90% um, of all cases are to be resolved within 10 months. 95% um, within 14 months. 50% within four months. Um, associate level criminals, so those would be your misdemeanors, 95% are to be resolved within eight months. But as you said, to be doesn't mean it is. Those are just time standards. You can never control like, right. if somebody gets a warrant and they've absconded for years and then they show back up. Well, you can't control for that. You can't control for um, a backlog in the public defender system then causing a time delay. But generally speaking, those Supreme Court operating rules, the judges, at least my experience, the judges are pretty strict if they're starting to bump up against those time standards, they're setting the case for jury trial. The, those, I mean, unless you have a really good reason, like your client is mentally ill and they're um, not competent to proceed, or it's a death penalty case and, and there's an issue with, you know, if they push too fast and the defense isn't ready, then that will get reversed. Unless it's something like that, when they're bumping up against those time standards, the courts, are, those judges, are setting those cases for trial. They are making the, the defendants and the attorneys show up and the prosecutors show up for court hearings to talk about what is going on, why is this case still lingering. 
Okay, Rose, I started by saying in order to make the board more effective and stronger at what we're supposed to do, can the policies be changed at all? The bylaws is something that you all, the prior boards, developed and approved. And there's a process in there for amending the bylaws. The bylaws have to be consistent with the ordinances and the law. So if you don't like something in the ordinances, you cannot amend it through the bylaws. The bylaws are more about your procedure and okay. how you're going to deal with things. So if you have a problem with the ordinances, that's why we have this annual review of the ordinances to let you look at them, think about them. It doesn't have to be now during the annual review of the ordinances. Anytime you think, hey, maybe we need to change this ordinance, well, then we need to put that on an agenda so you can start talking about that and getting public input on what you're attempting to do. And then your action is to do a report to the council on what it is you're recommending be changed. And then council takes that report and council decides whether or not they want to change that. Got you. Um, in the past, um, I know one of the things that was like that was um, when you could go into closed session. And the board, after having some experience, developed some criteria and, and sent a report to council where they listed, I don't remember how many things, how many different times they thought it would be appropriate to go into closed session. That report went to council and council had a lot of discussion about it and council decided they agreed with some of them but didn't agree with others. And I think they might wanted more information or something. So they sent it back to the board to kind of flush that out a little bit more and then eventually legislation was sent to amend the ordinance to provide for uh, what the council agreed was more appropriate. But it wasn't what the whole board had wanted. So um, that's kind of the nature of it is you kind of have to think through that um, and, and think through you know how that would look and what what that role is and then you send a report to council kind of justifying what change you're wanting and then council then gives staff direction whether to draft legislation or not um, if it's something really simple where you know yeah we're cleaning up something like term limits we are going to recommend that or the election being in a certain if it's something as simple as that, whatever motion you pass to as to your recommendation the report to council, that's easy to draft the legislation. I would send, more than likely, I would send the legislative draft with the report. Um, but that's really up to the city council. If you're talking about overall what I think you're going for, Bill, which I think is more than just a little tiny tweak to the ordinance, it's more kind of restructuring civilian oversight, I would say you all really flesh out what it is you're asking, do a report to council, and then let council weigh in on whether or not they want to do that. And part of that is, is not only do you need to decide what it is you're asking for, you need to solicit public input. Because of all the boards and commissions that I know of, this board, when it was founded, had the most public input that I've ever seen a board or commission have before they start a board or commission. They established a committee to decide if we should have civilian oversight and if we're going to have civilian oversight, how should that be structured? And that committee met and worked for a long time and submitted a report to council basically outlining how other places do it, what they thought was appropriate for the community. They had public input sessions. They did a lot of work to get where we are. And council at the time then relied upon that and that's how the legislation was drafted. I have a, so I have a, you, a point I'd like to make and then we can go on. Uh, I was, um, I was the, just gonna say, so when you go to the national conferences, those of you who've gone and you see different models, they studied those different models, they interviewed people in other communities to decide what they thought was appropriate based on the public input for our community. So it may be that, maybe that's changed, maybe the community changed, but because there's that long history and there's you know reports out there, you know, you, you, if you're gonna reopen it, you should probably go back and read through those, all that stuff and then say, you know, do you really wanna reopen it and if so, how? 
and then we put it on the agenda and you start having that conversation so that when you do the report to the council, you can say, you know, this was our idea of how we wanted to change it. This is the public input sessions that we heard from the community about. We went and we spoke with these different groups about it. This is what we've got. This is why we're recommending this change because then it's council sees that you've done kind of similar work than what was done when the board was founded. That makes sense. Yeah, and I and I understand that. It's just um, I don't know when the last time you know these things, the ordinances have been tweaked, but um, in the one incident in which we saw, and even with the incident that I find very offensive with Mr. Tate, even though no, no one has stepped forward as a complainant, uh, it's my opinion that as a board, we should be able to produce some type document to whatever chief uh, in that that violates a policy that we do not need a complainant to come forth, you know, to say that this is because, again, I find it very offensive and maybe I could be the complainant. Well, I think your role would be to, if you're gonna file a complaint, then you become the complainant and you have to recuse from any discussion of the matter if it comes on appeal to the board. That, uh, it's just like if, let's say one of you was in, Daryl, I think you told me you were in a car accident. Let's pretend that that car accident, you... If I didn't like the way the CSA handled the case. Right, and you wanted to file a complaint. He has a right to file a complaint. He has a right then to appeal to the board, but he can't be the complainant and the board member w deciding it. So he would have to recuse because he would be a different role. So if you see something and you want to file a complaint, just know that you're not gonna take part in the discussion as the board. You will then become the complainant. You'll have the rights associated with a complainant. I understand. Okay, let's move on. Did you want me to put anything on next month's agenda other than the two matters we've already talked about? I'd love for us to at least entertain uh, looking at some of the ordinances or some of the policies and, and if there's anyone that sees anything that they would like to see changed, I know I do, uh, that would help the board, the entire board, and the citizens. Um, because once again, in the one case that we had where the citizen didn't see the police officers talking about it very, very badly. So out of all the cases that we've had, that one case is the one that sticks out to you that you feel that we need to change the ordinances? No, I think we probably need to have all of the complainants come back in because of Mr. Tate's well, we're dealing fingerprints. With, we're immediately dealing with, you mentioned one case. Well, I can't mention that case, you know, because right. it's- Right, so, yeah. but you're, you immediately mentioned one case, and now you're bringing another issue, and you're bringing in, you raised the issue of one case, which needed, um, is the reason that you feel the need to change the ordinances is am I getting just the why you want to review that well I don't know how many other citizens would benefit no, but from we're that. dealing with you you're dealing with me yeah because you're on the board and we are <clears throat> trying to figure out what whether we need to review the sections are you proposing that we review the ordinances next meeting sure yes He's proposing that we are review the ordinances next just meeting. Just all of them. So just pass the discussion. Which ones are you proposing we review? Um, I, can I get those to Rose? Well, we kind of need them to know which one to review. Well, nothing's going to happen to them tonight, so i like to ask it to just get them to you, and then I'll send them on. You can yeah, send them we to do, Rose. We do the draft agenda tomorrow for the okay. next meeting. So basically i clean up the minutes tomorrow morning and we prepare the draft agenda from the minutes sure. if you'd like what i could do is i could just put annual review of sections 2144 through 2159 again on next month's agenda and then you could kind of look at the prior reports and decide and then and then you know any further public outreach will be then in march sure does that work does that yeah work? yeah because i mean there are minutes that don't really say a whole lot at all when we really look at them. Thank you, Darrell. Let's do it. Moving on to supplemental budget requests. 
Rose? This, like I said earlier, this is, we're in the supplemental budget process time period for fiscal year 2020. So if there's anything that you want to purchase or pay for that you don't have a budget for, um, that you would like to ask the city to include in its budget that goes to the council in August for fiscal year 2020, which starts October 1st of 2019, now is your opportunity to start having that discussion. Um, all submittals have to work their way through and be submitted internally in March. However, you're part of the city council budget, so we need to get that information to the city clerk so she can incorporate it in her budget supplemental request. So, you know, for example, if you find you wanna to go to events with fees, kind of research what you wanna to go to, how much that's gonna be. If you decide you want to buy a uh, tent, you know, research what it is you want, how much that costs, and you need to provide a justification that we can then give the city clerk. But it would take a motion by the board with a second and a vote to ask for that. To give you an example, the Human Rights Commission, they want, they passed a motion to uh, make a supplemental budget request in the amount of $500 because they want to join the International Association of Official Human Rights Agencies and they also want to go to the Missouri Human Rights Conference. So they're at going to ask for $500. Um, so this, the question is, is, is there something else that you all want to ask for that you don't have a budget for? I'd like to propose, and, and I don't know what the specific, I don't know if we can kind of estimate off previous years, but uh, I'd like to propose a supplemental budget request for funds for a third member to attend the NAPO conference. Absolutely. Four seems like it might be too much, but and I could be wrong there. I'd like stuff for discussion, but yeah, I'd like to at so least we get have more three. representation there and get more uh, more of the board members to get through there and get uh, certified. Ideally, I'd like to have it so that we have three people in the CPO, either CPO or in the CPO process, so that we have a third of the board that is either certified or on the path towards certification. And speaking of this. Um, because NACOL does their conferences, and sometimes they're in September, and sometimes they're in October, and sometimes they're half in September and half in October. This year, it was half in September, half in October, or thereabouts, which means your budget this year has already taken a hit for last year's conference. So, um, what do we need some to of... Do we to council to transfer funds from the yeah that, that's basically if you want to send two it's probably going to be that way um, so right now your travel budget is two thousand six the, the amount available in your travel budget is two thousand six hundred ninety five dollars and sixty five cents so um, that's probably only going to cover one person uh, the new one the one that'll be this fall, will be in this fiscal year. So um, that would be for this coming this coming conference because it's in this fiscal year. You can't do that through supplemental. That has to be through a report to council. Um, so your supplemental process is for anything that would be for fiscal year starting October first. You have the dates, Baxter? Uh, I was looking to see if there? I did, and I don't see them anywhere in there. I know I've got them on some documentation somewhere, but I don't have them available right now. Well, to, to go along with that NACL thing, I'd like to set up kind of a, a larger um, systemic process where there's nine members, so if we're sending three a year, um, we could have some kind of rotation um, that attaches, uh, you know, like, I guess, training schedules um, we can push the budget out for as many years as we want with this cycle if we knew so if everyone takes a number um, we all get in line and then everyone cycles through Th those that have been um, up for you know expiration Absolutely. can um, go to the front of line I guess but then that allows for this kind of equitable movement of all the members through we can s s I guess switch dates and years if conflicts come up but, um, <clears throat> Something. And also coordinate it with people's um, expiration of term 
Sure, yeah. And just like a longer term thing that we can bring to council and say, hey, this is how you can professionalize the whole board with police oversight and not this kind of patchwork where um, we decide. Correctly is for initial certification, mm -hmm. is it two within three years or is it you have to attend two consecutive conferences? Consecutive? Okay. Consecutive. All right. So I'm, I'm going to reach out to Nicole and maybe get something in writing and ask them if they have some kind of, you know, plug in that I can put in nine members and say, what does that look like to keep them all certified? So what I'll do is I'll put this on next month's agenda. Ask for supplementals. Um, the Nicole conference is September 22nd through 26, 2019. Well, that's, that's this, this year, fiscal year. Fiscal year. So you, and it's in Detroit, Michigan. So another thing would be for you all to look at your calendars and see how many people are really coming. If I remember right, they usually have early registration deadlines in like June. And Cor this would be Cornella and Baxter. You two would have to go this year to get your certification for it to be the two consecutive. 22nd through 26th in Detroit. I thought at one point you had mentioned that they were going to be for the certification. I think Scott something. Said that. Yeah, and they haven't updated their website and that information in over a year it's after they talked about it's it. Very so fluid. Like said, but that, do we, yeah. that might be something that you have mm -hmm. to request <clears throat> funds for as mm -hmm. well. So if you're contacting them, I would say also if we could find that out, that would be helpful to kind of look and see. How much money you would need um, right now your miscellaneous contractual has quite a bit of money in it because of the and then the other is and if you ever need interpreters and that sort of thing um, is there enough funds in mediation contractual to, for us to put over for the two of us to go well see that's you would have to get counsel to right agree I, I understand that. that but that's what I was gonna say is that you have a lot sitting there, and um, you've only referred, I think, one case to mediation and, and a party declined mediation. So I don't think the attorney or the mediator billed us for that one. I'll have to check with Trace, but I don't think she did. Um, and so that is still sitting there. And I know in years past, that's what's happened is the report to council was to recommend that some of those funds be moved into travel and training to allow for however many members of the board to go. Um, that's always easier for the council to do when you have money over here and they're just moving it over here than if you don't have money and you're asking for money. Because then they have to find money someplace else in the city budget to then transfer over to what you're asking for. The only time where that's really different is that supplemental time. During the supplemental process, if you can get it included in the budget that gets passed by council in August, then you're, you know, they've already planned for it, the money's already there. Um, which is how you ended up with the pot of money for the mediation part of that kind of supplemental process. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you're probably going to, if you want to send anybody this year, which it sounds like you do, you're going to have to do a report to council Plus, those funds probably be transferred. And when do we need to get that in? Um, council deadlines are the Friday before the Friday before a council meeting. So, if early registration is in sometime, you would probably want it to go to council in May. So, you'd probably want it to be or Have it in our want April it no meeting. later than your April meeting. You'd want to do your motion no later than your April. Earlier is always better. I mean, if out how much it's going to cost and how many people want to go and, and we can get the stuff submitted through the council agenda process um, that's always better to do earlier than to wait anything else under supplemental budgets I don't have anything on supplemental but I would like to go back up I kind of work that way a little bit um, the um, uh, 
date for the spring, uh, spring training, as you call it. Has there been a subject identified that we're going to discuss, talk about? The, there's a list of subjects that NACOL recommends training be provided for review board, and by the ordinance, we're required to use that to schedule the training. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that list, and then I'm going to look at who we can find in the community for speakers. Um, if you have ideas of things you want to be trained on and you, speakers you want to have come in to present, you can email them to me, and I'm going to try and put something together to get as many of those things on the NACOL recommended training list done as we possibly can. Okay, I've been on the board for a year and hadn't had any training. Um, this last so. year, the training, the, the previous boards have, after we did the Saturday things for a while, the board decided what they wanted is they wanted me to invite speakers to come to a meeting. So when the board decided what they wanted to do, what speaker they wanted to have on what topic, We'd invite them to a meeting, and they, it was a special presentation. So you can go back through your annual reports and see who all those speakers were and what the topics were. Um, I try not to schedule speakers in the winter time because then there's the weather problem. And I would rather, if we're going to bring people in on a Saturday, I'd rather have lots of people lined up, no weather issues, um, no weather issues with you all coming. I know the last, I think it was the last time there was training at the training facility or maybe the time before that, we didn't even have a quorum show up. So really mark your calendars, hold those dates. Um, I think these, I don't like giving up a Saturday, but I think it's much easier to get you guys trained and provide you training from a variety of speakers if we do some block scheduling. Um, because you never know when you're gonna get a complaint or a, not a complaint in, you never know when you're going to get a peel in, and so if you already have an hour dedicated to a speaker, and then you have, you know, then the complainants waiting through all that, or vice versa. Okay, Rena, I ask and say this because um, the police department has, you know, a long list of policies and procedures that, you know, we haven't even touched as a board. Don't know any of them. You know, and uh, I w would think that we should familiarize ourselves with those things uh, and discuss those things uh, and try and understand how the police, the, the police department's interpretation of some of their own um, policies. That's the reason I ask. And so is there any way that um, we could sort of develop our own kind of maybe curriculum for a training day for us? Well, I mean, I can send you the list of the NACOL what recommended training because that by ordinance that's what you have to do, okay? Yeah, but by ordinance I didn't even I, have any training last year. I thought I'm, we I'm, had speakers coming yeah, last kinda, year. I think I might be imagining things, but I thought we had training on how the police department conducted training on uh, their recruiting and things like that, which are required by NACOL, but I might be imagining things. I'm getting a little senile and medicated. Sounds like we want some additional training. There you go. We are required something that'll there's, cost you something. There's our mandatory training, and that's right. great, and it sounds like Bill wants to do some additional training with regards to um, So what I need to policy. do is I need to get your mandatory training set up, and then if you want to have other training, that's fine. You all did receive the links that have the police department's policy manual online, and, uh, and you were to read that. And if you want to talk about a particular policy at a meeting, then that's something you would tell me to put on the agenda. And then we'd put it on the agenda, and you could talk about whatever that policy was. Um, there's nothing that prevents <clears throat> you from doing that whenever you want to do that. It just has to get on the agenda so the public is aware that that's what you're going to be talking about. But if we decide to talk about a police policy, it kind of really, to me, doesn't go anywhere because we have no, say, control over technically the police department. And I'm thinking of a particular situation of something that I brought up, but I was kind of told, well, that's their policy and we don't oversee that. 
So I'm kind of I'm kind of trying to figure out why would we discuss policies when we don't have any technically to say so over what they do. You can make recommendations either in a letter to the chief or acting chief on something, or you can write a letter to the or report to council, or you can write a letter to the city manager, but. If you are doing it as an individual, you're doing it as an individual. If you are doing it as a board, it takes a motion, second, and a vote. That's, That's part of what these. You you are advisory, so you can you can pass a motion to send a letter to the chief saying whatever, or send a letter to the city manager saying whatever, or send a, a report to council about whatever. And the board has done that in the past. Board has also in the past passed motions and sent reports asking the police chief to adopt a policy that they thought was needed that he didn't have, and he adopted the he, he created a policy and adopted it. I'm just saying that's not what was said to me that night when we discussed it particular situation I wish I had knew then that we could have adopted a something to send to the police chief I had a real issue and concern about their policies and procedures on a particular situation but it's good to know that we can now Thank you. also the other the other time I've seen that done not only do they pass the motion, but sometimes it's in the context of a, like sometimes it's a policy thing will come up that's not in the context of a complaint or appeal, okay? Which case then it's just, hey, we're looking at this policy, we're talking about it, we have these ideas, right? Sometimes it'll come up in the context of an appeal. And so when that's happened before with the appeal is the board makes the decision on the appeal and in their letter it says, this is our recommendation on the appeal. <coughs> However, we also believe you need a policy on this. So that was like two motions, but one letter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It makes sense, Rose, but I've been here a year and I've not seen that at all, not once. We've spent probably 30 minutes talking about um, the budget and um, we've never spent that much time talking about one policy regarding the citizens out there um, of Columbia in a regular meeting in just a regular meeting, not one where we have um, a case to come before us. And so I was just asking, outside of just regular meetings, we need to learn the police department's policy because if you don't know what it is, then you may not really understand, and I'm not saying that we don't understand, but let's help each other to understand. There anything else? Is there anything on items one through seven that we need to back up on that we have not covered so far that we want to recover? Hearing none, moving on to item eight, general comments by the public, members of the board, and staff. If you are members of the public, you'll be given three minutes. If you are representing an organization, <coughs> you'll be given five. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to come forward and be heard? When you come forward, please give your name. Welcome, how are you? Uh, my name is Karen Sikonator, and I am the owner of 360 Como, which is a marketing company. I really wanted to bring up the banner situation again because I know there is a lot of frustration about that. And sitting in the audience, it's been a source of frustration myself. 
I do this for a living. And when I see my tax dollars going towards an almost $300 tablecloth in lieu of a $30 banner, I, I'm a little concerned on how that money is being spent. I'm also concerned that we now no longer have funds for other things within the context of that because we're spending close to $300 on a screen printed tablecloth as opposed to a digitally printed banner for 30 bucks. I want to see if that was something that would be able to be corrected where you could spend significantly less money and have more money for things like brochures for public education. There are a lot of opportunities within the city. The city last year hosted a series of block parties that were free to the public. They were free for vendors to come and essentially pass out information to various communities around Columbia. It would be a wonderful opportunity to get this information out to those free events, to these blog parties. Even the police department was hosting some of these blog parties themselves, which were free and a good place to disseminate some of this information. I want to make sure that my tax dollars are going towards something that is very much valuable and useful to our citizens. I really appreciate you coming forward and making that statement. And I really appreciate you offering a valuable option, which to me represents good stewardship of tax dollars. If you can give us an option or present an option that accomplishes the same thing for much less money, I think that is something that every single department, yeah. board, yeah. any governmental agency that is using tax dollars should be doing yeah. because that represents good stewardship. And I would put forward to the board that is something that we have an obligation to explore is are we able to accomplish the goal of getting what we need to do, uh, you know, our name or whatever we want to do, whatever Mr. Um, Davis. Thank you. Davis wants to do with the banner and he's presented before the board. If we can do it with the silk screened. So um, what you're ordering currently would be a screen printed tablecloth as opposed to just a digitally printed vinyl banner. And I order these all the time. I order these all the time for politicians who are going to events all over the place. I know how much they cost and I know that I can get them union printed for $30 plus shipping. I think that is something we absolutely have an obligation to the taxpayers of the city of Columbia to explore. And why wasn't that brought up prior? And this was discussed. We've had these discussions for eight months on what to do, and yes. we as a board determined to get this table no, clause. No one presented that option. That was presented. Yes. It was absolutely presented as an yes. option to screen print a it banner was. as opposed to doing a, a, a tablecloth. The I reason we did not... the tablecloth was it was a more permanent purchase that we would not need to purchase again that we could use for multiple events in the future. How I, I'm, not, I'm not disputing the value of the- How, how durable is the screen printed banner versus a table, table cloth? So the screen printed tablecloth, they tend to get a little bit more dirty, especially if you're having outside events versus a vinyl banner, which you can literally hose off. So the, the vinyl banners are actually, in my opinion, more durable than a screen printed tablecloth, which requires, you know, laundering and pressing and making sure that it's looking correct and whatnot versus a banner that you can just roll up and take and go. It's, it's not, I mean, there's even different weights in vinyl banners that you can get. If you want something that's going to last you for the next 15 years, you can get a heavier weight for $10 more. Thank you. I'd oh. like to, um, I'd like to, I guess, do a motion and so that Baxter could maybe work with um, our presenter here and maybe. Well, I think we have restrictions with regards to how the city can purchase or uh, the avenues that they can go through. But uh, if, it, if what we're saying is we kind of want to back up and, and redetermine how we want to go forward on this banner versus tablecloth issue, then. I would like to make a motion that we push that to final decision next month with full options on what we can and cannot purchase on vinyl banners and tablecloths and whatnot so that we can just put this to bed. I think it is an important option, especially when we can redirect those funds to better serve the citizens of Columbia 
with both more brochures, different mailings or something that's just good stewardship to have something that is more durable, represents a better investment and a better return on investment. Is that your recommendation? I suppose my motion is to, gosh, what is the exhaustive motion here? I guess our motion is to dismiss our decision on what we determined earlier with Banner and to then decide in our February meeting whether, what our final decision is, whether we want to do a banner or some other type of media. I think prior to that, we're going to need to have any additional options for vinyl banners or, or any other type of printing service so that we can have an educated uh, conversation on what we want to do and we can just be done. I, I don't know how, oh, that's the motion or not, but or this is broken up to two motions to dismiss our earlier determination. I, I don't I think I, I have. I think I have it down. Yeah. I have made a motion to dismiss the decision earlier on the banner and then decide at the February meeting what options there are for vinyl banners, tablecloths, et cetera. I second. Okay. Um, go ahead and do the vote, but before we get off this topic, I would, I would like to ask a question. So go ahead and. All in favor of rescinding the previous decision to in, um, make the expenditure for the tablecloth banner and moving forward with looking at the options at the February meeting, that may be more cost effective. Let it be known by aye. 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 Anyone opposed, let it be known by nay. Nay. Motion passes. Rose, you had some concerns? Um, let me just go forward to Andrew's. Oh, sorry, I did. Um, when we started this, I asked you all to send me kind of what you thought a banner was because some people thought of them as tablecloths, some th people thought of them as the vinyl things with the grommets. I don't know what to get estimates for unless you tell me what it is you think you want. Um, we then can call and get the government pricing rate or look at what contracts there are to get the things printed. As well as Brian Jones had offered to uh, shelter print something. Um, but the only thing that was sent was Miss Williams sent the table covering and that's what we got estimates on, and that's what you guys then focused on. No, not when you said table covering. Covering, I was under under the impression it was the band, ah, the vinyl thing. Well, that and, you're and that's table cloth, right? That silk screened is what was sent to me. Is what you all were talking about on the on the issue. What I brought up initially when we started this discussion was to really think about how you're going to use it because that'll dictate what it is you actually need or want. Um, the ones with the grommets are great if you have a tent and you're hanging them at an outdoor activity like Earth Day or Pride Fest or uh, some sort of party kind of setting where you can tie that up and, and everything. If you don't have something to hang it from, it doesn't work so great if you have the We event. use tape on tables well I mean it, it works it kinda, well I mean it kind of depends on what it is and what look you're going for right so some events that I've gone to is they require a tablecloth however that doesn't mean you have to have your logo on the tablecloth sometimes they'll provide you with the like they want all the tables covered in black tablecloths so they put the tablecloths on the black table and then some people have little signs that pop up and are tall and some people have like signage that like multiple boards or folding boards or banners that they either bring something to hang it from or they hang it from or tape it to the table. So it just kind of depends on what you're going to do with it as to what you want it to be. I can tell you for like, I think she's right that something like that can work indoors or outdoors. Tablecloths don't necessarily work well at outdoor events. Um, from my experience, the things that absolutely work terrible at outside events, and I would, if you're thinking you're going to do outside events, do not get the ones that are on the long sticks that roll up. There's an example out here. They're, they look great inside, but the first event I took it to, it became a sale. It broke the stick, and there was a couple hundred dollars just gone. Um, so really think about how you're going to use this thing. Um, 
and and what you're going to do with it because that will then dictate what it is you actually want to buy. You have a brochure or something with a couple different designs that you could email. I was going to say, you can just Google. I, I can actually, I'm friends with Delaney, so I can forward some of the stuff to her. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your concern and stewardship of, you, of tax thank dollars. You. <coughs> Hi, how are you? And thank you. I will share. Can I get one of those for the record before I do? Somebody, thank when you. you're done with it, I need to put it in the file. Totally up to you. Thank you. Well, Sharon, I guess. All right, well, I'm, I'm Chad McLaurin, and it's been uh, maybe a couple months since I was last up here um, discussing some of these issues with the board. Um, I, I would like to just kind of add as a caveat, um, some of the brochures that, that Karen was mentioning, I, I think, you know, they'll provide some ideas, but a Google search, I think, is, is, is a good place to start. Also, if you're worried about the presentability of this, like as a table covering, you can order the table skirts and table claws just plain and you're gonna get them for fractions of the dollar what it would cost to actually print on them. So you could use a combination approach. So that's when I throw that out there as um, something to consider when you're trying to price these things. Thank you. Uh, what I wanted to kind of harp on this time was, um, again, I kind of brought up, um, according to like section 2149, uh, duties of the board, and um, section four is particularly the section that I'm kind of keyed in on. As if we look at this, um, I'll read it out. Uh, review and make recommendations to the police chief and city manager on police policies, procedures, and training. Yes. That seems pretty cut and dry to me. And I agree with Mr. Davis that if you guys are not reviewing um, those policies and procedures, um, you're, you're not living up to the full potential of the board and what it ultimately can be doing for the public. And I realize that this is, uh, the specter of Mathis is still with us. I can't tell you how happy that we have seen some change in leadership. I was um, very just kind of disenchanted with the way that he ran business. Uh, definitely not transparent. And I think that this is exactly what this kind of board is meant to do. And I think that he has purposely crippled it um, along with the human rights and other oversight committees, basically because of just his management style. Uh, I think he's an extremely toxic leader and I'm glad to see him gone. Um, same with Chief Burton, no tears lost there. Um, for you guys picking up the the bits here, good luck. <laughs> that's, all, that's really all I got. Um, the organizational change, the reason I kind of brought this up, and again, I apologize for like the washed out um, color on this. I just threw this together today. Um, but if you want to look at the, um, the very first slide, there's the article quoted, and you can go to the website and see it, and he links to like a lot of things in here. And I just thought it was a good kind of summary of what organizational change has to do. And I realize that, you know, this is not the purview of this particular board, um, carte blanche, I mean, there, there are some issues that I think that some of these ideas would certainly help kind of um, give you more of a focus, an idea of like when you go to review procedures and policies and training and so on and so forth, this kind of gives you a framework of what you should be expecting and kind of leads you to analyze certain aspects. Um, I will be pushing for a lot of these things to be incorporated as part of the city council when we address them. Um, we're hoping that with the audits, the auditors will be looking for a lot of these same factors and it'd be kind of nice if you guys had some familiarity with this and at least kind of were on the same page and came pre-prepared a little bit for like some of the things that were coming down. Well, one of the better ones that I um, appreciated was actually on slide number three. Um, I think that kind of gives you like a very, very basic rundown of some of the, um, just as the basic concepts. This is not like a, a step-by-step -step playbook here. It's just more of things to kind of keep in mind and when you approach some of these policy reviews, things that you can keep in mind with the aspect of change. Uh, the corporation culture, whether that's a city government, whether that's an organization of any kind, um, across the board on these models, you're, you're gonna be finding <coughs> that the first thing to do is you cannot make effective organizational change if you have strong centralized leadership. That has to be the first buy-in. I mean, you have to be able to mix that up. We are there, okay? With Mathis gone, with Burton gone, there is going to be more and more pressure pushed uh, especially if we're pushing for like a city audit, which um, 
we're, we're planning to basically support that as well. And when you say audit, a financial audit, performance audit, audit in what capacity? I believe uh, Mayor Treese was mentioning a performance audit. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. he was. He was. Yeah, and, and I agree because I think Math has kept a lot of things um, not transparent, if you would. And I think there's more and more problems that are going to be found the longer we go. Absolutely. So I would love to see this as a, as a, a, a change in, in the mindset of this board. I would love to see you guys dig in and get to know the policies and procedures. And you, you know, there, there, I understand there are rules and regulations and there are restrictions, but I also think that these have been honored far too much. And I think that we need to start taking action. Um, frankly, if it comes back to things like um, you have a complaint, call me, I'll file the complaint. You guys can sit and deliberate. I'm fine with that. I mean, some of these things are kind of asinine. And I do understand sometimes there's a reason to kind of restrict that we don't get carried away with our um, delivery of our duties. But I also think that this is, uh, it's also been way too timid in the past. And I think that's a direct reflection of the way math is operated. Um, so I would like encourage you to stand up and actually take a much more active role in voice in terms of analyzing all parts of what your job entails. But more specifically, um, the police department, there will be more and more scrutiny given. Um, I would love to see cooperation and I would love to see this interaction and not so much the public trying to pitch away at each separate organization. To me, it seems like this is a good stopping Great. point to yeah. kind of branch out for okay. all other things. Great. Thank you. I'd like to um, thank him for coming in because I think the area in which I would love to see the board go, the, the direction I'd like to see the board go, uh, is the area of uh, accountability audits. Yes. Police departments have them all over this country. Um, but, you know, we do expect resistance here. Uh, they do help police departments. Uh, they're not there to identify everything that's wrong with the department, but this information is given to the department so that it can become stronger. Right. And that makes the community trust the police department more rather than um, having a union that is um, very divisive, and so I want to thank you for sharing that with them. I'm sure they wouldn't hear it from me. Right. Thank you. Fair enough. Thank you much. Thank you. Anyone else? Members of the board. I have a question for uh, Ms. Williams. Ms. Shaluti, am I saying it right? Yes, ma'am. Um, we kind of talked before a little bit. So one of the things that came to my attention that I read um, was that um, the acting person went to go talk to the current police department to see what the morale was there. And even though you told me an answer, I wanted the board to be able to hear the same answer that you had gave, because I wanted to actually speak to him to see what his assessment of the morale was now that Chief Burton is gone because um, one of the concerns that I had is that if you have a leader and there's chaos in the house, that makes it, it funnels down. And so now that he's gone, what is going on now? Then my second question is, um, I'm gonna open up Pandora's box and deal with something that I read today that was brought to my attention, Sergeant Tate, who has sat in that chair the whole entire time that I've almost been here. And I'm concerned with <coughs> some of the things that I read that he has supposedly tweeted. And as I say supposedly, because I wasn't there, I don't know if he did or if he didn't, my issue that I have is A, that he sat there with possibly this attitude that he has, and then B, that he is being investigated by the same people that I have an issue with. If I have something going on in my house and I'm the one that's doing the investigation in my house, I'm not going to really let anybody else know that what goes on in my house stays in my house. I don't like that. I don't like the fact that Columbia Police Department is investigating them own selves. Uh, to me, that is an issue for me. And that was the number one thing that I read in the paper is that y'all investigate your own selves all the time. So how does anything change when you're investigating your own self? You're cleaning up your own laundry. 
but you're not making yourself transparent to the people in the community. And to me, that is an issue. The people in the community need to know exactly what is going on in the Columbia Police Department because they don't have trust. And some of that trust is because y'all not making yourselves transparent to the people in the community. So if you can address all of that, and then on top of that, um, how long does the investigation with Sergeant Tate is it supposed to take? And then if what, what is the actual policy that you have going on after the investigation, especially with the fact that he was just promoted to lieutenant. Then my biggest thing is, is that we may end up having fallout from people that come back and say, well, you know, he, he found that my internal investigation wasn't in favor or, you know, I don't agree some of his issues, races, terminology may have played into him having this finding there was no fault from the Columbia Police Department because of some of his attitudes that he may possibly have. There could be fallout from that, from people saying something later on down the road. So I know that was a lot. That's okay. I tried to make a few notes while you were talking, right. so if I missed something, feel free to come back and, and remind me. So as far as the morale issue, one thing I would say is, and I kind of mentioned this to you, I think morale is very personal. Um, I think that morale is very dependent on individual people and a lot of things that are going on in their lives. I will tell you, uh, I have been there through a chief transition um, and in talking to people that have been through more than me, it's always difficult no matter what the circumstances are. Um, a lot of it I think is uh, anticipation of what the new person might be like as opposed to the old person, uh, what's going to change, what's not going to change. and so. I think depending on who you would ask, there's people who are very excited by that prospect and maybe some people who are very fearful by that prospect and that's not to make any referendum on Chief Burton or anyone previously, but having been through one of those changes, I think there's always a lot of questions people have. Um, I would say from my perspective, uh, Mr. Glasscock has done an excellent job trying to communicate very directly with the people at the police department as far as what his expectations are of commanders of uh, how this process is going to work. Uh, he is very present. He's been in the building at 4.30 in the morning. He was in the building at five o'clock yesterday at shift briefing. Uh, he comes through and just kind of shows up and I, I think that's been very well received to be perfectly honest with you. Um, an officer made a comment to me just a couple days ago from, he's a night shift officer, but from his perspective he said, this is the second time I've seen a city manager in the building since I've been here in you know six or seven years. So. I would say for most people it seems like morale is improving to a certain degree, but I think there's obviously a lot of nervous anticip anticipation or maybe cautious optimism about what the future holds. Um, as far as the investigation, so I'm going to get ready to give a little speech here that probably a lot of people aren't going to like, but that's okay because I've given it before. <coughs> and um, One of the things I've learned in my job in administration that's extremely difficult is you have to balance um, due process and processes with people's want, wanting to know what's going on because it's, it's a public agency and we obviously have a lot of power and a lot of um, control over people. And so I can't speak to the particular um, you know, details or outcomes or anything like that about uh, Lieutenant Tate's, the investigation around Lieutenant Tate. I can tell you that um, the person that I have assigned to investigate that has never been supervised, worked with, worked in internal affairs with Lieutenant Tate at all. Um, I purposely picked someone that I felt could be very independent. I would also add that the way our internal affairs system is structured by policy and contract is they are not uh, they do not make determinations. So when we do an investigation and there's a complaint, they are simply fact finders. So they try to go in and do an investigation and get all the video or interviews or documents or all those types of things, just like you would in a criminal investigation. And then that information is submitted to the chain of command and the chain of command goes through those and says, okay, I've taken all this in, I've read all this, I think the complaint is sustained, not sustained, unfounded, and what and go on down the line. If it's sustained, obviously, then each commander recommends what they think the appropriate discipline is. So the internal affairs investigator doesn't get to say, 
I think they did it or I think they didn't do it. That's not their role, at least at our department. Other places, it doesn't work that way. Uh, and that's just the model that we chose. Um, I, I completely understand people's interest in the case. Um, I can't give you a for sure time frame about when it's going to be finished. Um, and as Mr. I think Mr. Glasscock got asked at uh, the city council meeting Monday night, it's a personnel matter and I just can't discuss any of the issues that surround it. So Rose, can we make mm -hmm. a suggestion, uh, make a recommendation that to Mr. Glasscock that they not investigate themselves in this situation? Our chief. Yes. Good. I mean, you'd you'd do a motion, second vote, and then it would just be sending a letter. Yes. I have a question for uh, the deputy chief here. Um, I'm I'm sitting here and I can't believe I'm hearing what I'm hearing from you. Uh, when Lieutenant, maybe he was Sergeant Tate, when he put on his dog and pony show some months ago here, I think it was maybe June 13th, uh, I asked him specifically because he had a, had a PowerPoint slide. That's the reason I asked you for that PowerPoint. And that's the reason that you told me that it had to go through a long, long process. And that's I'm sorry, okay. what's the reason why I told you that? Well, because maybe you've talked to Mr. Tate. Probably so. But anyway. Are you accusing me of doing something inappropriate? Can no, I, what, can it's I not just, inappropriate. Can, I'm just um, saying what happened. Bill, yes. let me explain something. If the board wants to request anything from the police department, then the board passes a motion. And if that motion passes, then the board gets that free of charge. And I go through and I get it for you. And it gets dispersed because it's a board request. However... Because of the Missouri Sunshine Law, if you make an individual request of a record and you are doing it as an individual and not the whole board or the a majority of the board requesting it, then it is processed like a Sunshine request. So what they have done is they've put it in the tracker for the Sunshine request. They're doing everything just like they would because you made that request as an individual. So if you want to make a motion to request something from the police department and it passes, then we do a different process. Okay, hang and, on. And the Let's reason just go ahead and make a motion now because I don't need that. I'd just like to make a motion that we get that PowerPoint, a PowerPoint presentation that Mr. Tate used uh, at our June 13th meeting uh, regarding internal affairs. PowerPoint presentation, um, June 13th of last year, that they provide that to the board. Motion's been made to acquire uh, at that time, Sergeant Tate's PowerPoint presentation that was made to the board at the June meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by aye. 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 And, and the reason I'm, I'm asking for Anyone opposed, this. let it be known by nay. Motion passes. Rose, would you make a request yes. to PD? Thank, thanks, Daryl. The reason I'm asking is because within that PowerPoint presentation, I asked him specifically if he made recommendations, and he said yes. And the PowerPoint presentation says, yes, he makes recommendation. And I went on to question him about conducting investigations and then providing a recommendation. And that's not an investigator's job. So, and you're correct, and there are some very narrow times, and those are called, uh, we have a term for it in the policy, um, uh, cursory reviews. So, I would term a cursory review as there are times where someone can make a complaint, and I'll use a really easy one, we'll say rudeness. So, someone calls in and complains and says, uh, I got pulled over by Officer Schluty, and she called me a dirty SOB and a whole bunch of other things, okay? And so... First thing we're going to do, obviously, is review any body-worn camera video or in-car video. So if that's observed, if the officer, if the IA person, investigator looks at that cursory and looks at it and nothing, nothing like that ever happened, no such thing happened, very clearly, it's not even up for debate. I did nothing but go up and say, Mr. Davis, can I have your driver's license? Here's what happened. Normal <coughs> traffic stop. Then the IA investigator can write the letter to the chief, and it's all documented, saying cursory review revealed this did not happen, it's unfounded. Now, 
it's on the chief, whoever the chief is at the time, to obviously check that and make sure he or she confer, you know, confirms that. That's the only time they make any time of rec type of recommendation is in a cursory review. And that's just because for workload and time's sake, to have that go through the whole entire process when clearly we have video evidence that something did not occur would just be obviously a huge workload issue. Yeah, but when you're only allowing two eyes to see it, it's, you, there's a trust problem here. And I would think that the police department would want to dismiss any doubt whether um, an individual, a policeman, did something or didn't do something. We've had video here of incident, an incident out there, where there is no doubt <coughs> the policeman spoke and said things that were totally wrong, and it went through the hands of six people. Their jury department, I'm going, they didn't see this? And so, sure, I question it. I'm not upset about it. I just question it because because I was a cop, and I know how cops lie. And I, not knowing what particular incident you're talking but about, I, I understand, can't. I understand, you know, but I, I had to bring that up because I know that I ask, and, and, and I know that uh, maybe you were delaying me even looking at it or whatever. I, I even explained to Mr. Tate that I had taken snapshots of that particular video, a uh, particular slide, just in case he wanted to yeah. delete it. You know, and so whenever you get it to the board. I actually, I'm getting it out of your records and I am preparing the email right now so you will have it later tonight. You do have a copy of it, Rose? I do. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, had you all, had you asked me, I would have been able to find that. Anything else from members of the board? I just have a kind of a quick thing since a lot of thing we talked about today was the policy of the police department and how a lot of us we don't seem to we don't know the policies um, I'm just kind of curious is there a way like we can set aside parts of our meeting where maybe we'll just go through the, the policy book chapter by chapter and just each meeting we'll have reviewed it before the meeting and if we have anything we want to talk about mm -hmm. that chapter we can address it well, and the policies are all online, so what I would say is you can start looking at them and either email me to put it, like in the next few days, to put it on next month's agenda, or at the next meeting we'll just do a process for the policy review, and um, you can then go and say this month, or next month we're going to review this policy and this policy, and then we'll put those on the agenda, and then you can just kind of make your way through. The Human Rights Commission, what they've been doing is they've been reviewing the entire city code, for human rights and equity issues. And so they've looked at word counts and they go and they say, we want to review section 14-1 through 14-500. And then they then give themselves a month and they read through it and then they provide comments at the next meeting. So you could do something like that where you could pick it. I don't know whether you want to go in order that it's set forth on the website or whether you have particular ones you're interested in. But that's basically all we would need to do is just figure out what it is, put it on the agenda, and you'll want to probably have enough time, you'll want to announce it at one meeting to have enough time to give you the time to review and reflect on it before you're talking about it. So like if you wait and you say two days before the meeting, or two days before we post the agenda, oh, we want to review these different policies, well, that's only giving the other board members just a few days, really, by the time we put it on the agenda, send it out for them to work it in their schedule to review it. So what the Human Rights Commission does, I think, is a good model. It gives you lots of time, and then you can see like how many th you think you can get through in a meeting, and and go from there. Okay, because yeah, I was because Chapter One itself is pretty short, and if we want to go just through the book, it's really three and four are going to be the chapters that we're going to break down into multiple meetings because there's so many policies in it. But I, I I would like to see us do that. Maybe we can print them off and put them in a binder and bring them up. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm willing to do that. But I do want to make a motion. Um, okay, can I just um, let me make a note? I guess for that, I guess I would like to move to add chapter one to the agenda next meeting, just a review of chapter one. 
I don't even know that you need an motion. Is everybody in agreement on that? Yes. No, just tell me what you want to do. So, um, suggested. What I'm going to put is Travis Pringle suggested uh, review of police policies, beginning with with Chapter One. At, is it called Chapter One? Or yep, chapter One, law enforcement, chapter. role, and okay. authority. Okay. Perfect. And so I'll have that added as new business next time. Then, Ms. Williams. Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we send a letter of recommendation to Glasscock to have them do an external, other than the police department, do an investigation in this situation with Sergeant Tate. Repeat your motion again. I would like to make a recommendation that we send a letter to Glasscock asking him to do have someone else outside the Columbia Police Department to do the investigation into the situation with Sergeant Tate. We add a rationale to that motion to be included in the letter. Sure, because um, I, I <coughs> personally feel that you cannot investigate yourself and possibly come up with a different answer so what happens at home stays at home and i feel i feel that columbia police department needs to make themselves more transparent especially with the fact oh. that this has been so widely recognized i mean when i was online Ms. looking Williams, i need a really succinct motion because that she gave you a motion. This yeah, but she, this, we're this having, uh, I need a really succinct motion that we can have this, a second on. Oh, okay. this Mr. Is, Davis, this is what I have would down. you mind, unless you can really narrow it down for me, I would appreciate it. I will listen, I will entertain it as you heard it to be. This is what no, I have so me, far. You asked me I did, a, but he, you, you and he interjected that she made a motion. I would I entertain did, Mr. Did, Davis's I did, and then you asked me a question, and I was answering your question. No, I said, please, if you could give me a Darryl, rationale Darryl, just to be included with the motion. And I, that's what I was doing. Just a short one to be included, such as we would like to have. How about we have, let her respond before, instead of keep talking over her? My question I had to ask was, it sounds like maybe we want to ask the Missouri State Highway Patrol to investigate. Exactly. That is a rationale. So right. maybe no, 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 no. no, no, no. When I'm saying maybe rationale, her, stop trying to talk over me. I'm not trying to yeah, talk over you. Let we want an answer. independent body to. We want a rationale. You let her answer and tell you the rationale. No, I understand. I'm talking about for the motion. We want an independent body. The board is requesting an independent body to investigate. Mm -hmm. To investigate Sergeant Tate mm -hmm. because for the in, in the interest interest of transparency, which is what I said. Okay, in the interest of transparency. There's your rationale. That's it. That's for the motion. That's succinctly so and that it. clearly. So you had it. Rather, you're talking over, not allowing us to continue to discuss what I said about the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Sounds like the succinct version of we would pref we. Ms. Williams wants to make a motion to ask, to, make, to write a letter of recommendation to Mr. Glasscock to ask the Missouri State Highway Patrol to conduct an investigation. That is, there's your independent third body. There or, we go. That's what it is. That's all I I would say just let people finish talking instead of trying to talk over them and get your point across. I just needed a really succinct motion because it was not clear. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was, to have an independent third body in, in the interest of transparency. Okay, now I've changed this a couple times. I initially had the independent, uh, someone other than the Columbia Police Department, which is I think what you said. And then you said the Missouri State Highway Patrol. So what I have down right now, and you can tell me to fix it because it's your motion, mm -hmm. is she made a motion to send a letter of recommendation to interim city manager John Glasscock to ask the Missouri State Highway Patrol to conduct the investigation into allegations against Lieutenant Tate for uh, because of the interest of transparency? Yes. In the interest of transparency. That is my motion. Thank okay. you. Thank is you. there a second? One qu quick question. Second. Does it have to be Missouri Highway Patrol or can it be any, anybody? No, it can be anybody. Thank you. I think it's just common. The, the reason I suggested State Highway Patrol is because it's common for the Highway Patrol to investigate. Right, right. 
uh, right. to be the third party right, right, right. situation. So could I amend the motion to be Missouri Highway Patrol or or some other law for or some other independent body? Is that acceptable? No, I, I don't agree with that because what if it was the Jefferson City Police Department? It's still <laughs> within the house. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Missouri Highway Patrol it is. Is there a second? Uh, I've already, already seconded. seconded. All in favor of a motion to present a recommendation to Interim City Manager Glasscock from the board to have an independent review by the Missouri Highway Patrol of Sergeant or Lieutenant Tate. Let it be known by I. Aye. 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 Let it be known by nay. Those opposed, let it be known by nay. Those abstaining, let it be known by abstain. I'm abstaining. Two abstentions. Motion passes. Anything else from other members? Yeah, I, 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 I don't want this to go on like this, but and I, I like to say this. I think maybe on one of the snapshots that maybe you saw it uh, regarding Mr. Tate, and I think maybe you weren't mentioned in it, but I think that you were privy to it uh, However Twitter goes, I don't know. And I think that that would be one of the reasons that we would kind of like for you to take your thumbprint off of it, you know, because then you're assigning the person and you um, saw some of this misogyny. And What did I see and when? Well, I, I was somewhat of a question. Did you or did you not see some of it? Because I think... In Ask a, me that question and I will answer it on the record. Did you see it? No, I did not. You did not. Okay, then. Fine. That's it. That's, I don't want to have anything else because otherwise I have one more thing. Um, Bill Davis has scheduled public comment at the City Council meeting on January 22nd, 2019 on the topic of the review board. No. No. You didn't submit a request for scheduled public comment? Uh, is that the next, uh, because I thought it was February. I think it's the second meeting in okay. January. Okay. But the note said something about concerns about the police review board. Yes. I don't know more than that. But. What are your what issues, or what's your what's the purpose of the public comment? Um, earlier, when I talked about us focusing more and changing um, changing maybe some of our ordinances, or getting the city council to change some of the ordinances, because I I don't know if we can you know get it done through here. I just feel as though it needs to come downhill. Are you doing this as an independent citizen? Well, I'm a member of the board, so. So I think I need the board's approval to do that. That would be a board action. Well, when you can show me where it has to be a board action, then, then I won't do it. You can do it as an independent citizen. Well, I'll do it as an independent citizen. As long as it's clear it's as an independent citizen, that's not a problem. Sure. You don't lose your right, rights as, a, as an independent citizen simply by being sure. a member of the board, but it has to be clear that it is as an independent citizen and that it's I think I understand. Defend. I got it. Just so we're clear. Anything else? Anything from the staff? So we have chapter, let me go back through because I 
there was a lot of things going on for me to take notes on. So for next, next meeting, we have chapter one of police policies as new business, strategic planning as new business, old business is supplemental budget process, are we going to do the approval of the annual report? Yes. And I'll get a summary to you. Was there anything else you all wanted on next month's agenda? Uh, the review of the sections that Mr. Davis is going to send you. Oh, code sections. Code sections. So that's new business. And the review Banner. of 2147 with regard to a firm date with um, regard to the elections and the addition of term limits. There was also the banner table covering as old business and elections as old business. Is that right? So Ooh. new business, strategic planning, chapter one policy review, review of code sections that bill sends, whatever they are, and then section 2147 regarding firm dates of elections and term limits, old businesses, supplemental budget process, approval of annual report, banner table covering, and then the election. That's what I've got. PowerPoint presentation, Jill, I'm copying you on it. You all are getting it via blind copy. Okay. Anything else, Rose? Other than the motion to adjourn. Oh, hang on a sec. Anything from CPD? Small suggestion about policy review. As we are going through the CALEA accreditation process, we are updating a lot of policies to match the standards that they require. So if you come across a policy and you're wondering why a particular thing is in there or just the construction of it, um, we, we can get you the standards. It's actually a list that we can print out or email to you that says, here's what CALEA requires in this particular policy. Uh, and as those, I'll, I'll try to keep track if you're going to go in order, that'll make it really easy for us. So if I know there's ones that are in progress or have some changes that have been recommended, we can kind of keep you in the loop about that so you're not spinning your wheels looking at one that's in the process of being updated, if <clears> that makes sense. I think that'd be, thank you. I think it'd be super useful to have, especially going yeah. into the beginning of this re review process. So sure. And if at any time you want Sergeant Dockler, who's our policy and accreditation manager, to come speak, he's more than happy to. He's former PIO, so... He's used to speaking in front of groups. When is the when does the review have to be done? When does it have to be completed? Uh, we are supposed to have mock assessment later this summer, so we're we're chugging towards it. Anything else from members of the board? Anything else, Rose? Anything else, CPD? Hearing nothing, the next meeting date will be February 13th. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, let it be known by aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, let it be known by nay. We are adjourned. Thank you.